Hello, welcome to Timely Word and Prayer. This is week 29, the 29th week of the year. We give thanks to the Lord. He's led us through 28 weeks in the year, and it's just looking like, you know, we said Happy New Year yesterday, and we're already in the second half of the year. We just thank God for His mercies and for His his goodness, manifestations of his faithfulness. Let's just pray. Father, we give thanks to you for your loving kindness. That is what has brought us this far in the year. It's your faithfulness, it's your love, it's your goodness, it's your mercy that has helped us. And so, Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done to, to get us to where we are today. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory and praise in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So in this video, we're going to be uh, looking into the mystery of the 29th and uh, see how the Lord wants us to, um, to pray into this or how we need to use our seasons. Seasons don't respect men. It's men that need to understand seasons and, you know, um, understand seasons, recognize seasons, and uh, know what to do with seasons. Seasons come from the Lord and they come to bless us, uh, but we need to know how to get the best out of every season. When people don't pay attention to seasons, they might get wounded in the seasons. They might get wounded in the seasons. Seasons can whip people when they violate seasons because they do not understand that every season has its own thing. All right. But like, you know, in one of our videos, we talked about the seven garments that you need to help you, uh, that equips you for every season. So when we have these seven garments, you know, it doesn't matter which season comes, you already have these garments, you know what you ought to do. So, what are we supposed to do in the 29th? Understand that the 29th week is the, the beginning of the fifth seven weeks of the year. The fifth seven weeks of the year. This is the week that opens the womb of the fifth seven weeks of the year. And um, it is because it is the opener of the womb of the fifth seven weeks. It means this is a special season to the Lord. It's a special season to show honor, to, you know, give honor to the Lord. Um, because the Lord is first and the first is his. The Lord is first and the first belongs to him. So this is the week to lay foundation for the fifth seven weeks of the year. And I trust that the Lord who has led us to see the end of the uh, fourth seven weeks will also lead us to see the end of the fifth seven weeks. There are five things I'm going to be sharing with you about this season. The first is to know that um, this is a season to, to ensure the rights of the first. This is a same you secure the rights of the first. It's important. It's a time to secure the right of the first. And now we know that the first of all firsts is God. God is the first. And the first belongs to him. So this is the time to secure the right of the first. Now, that helps us to understand why, why uh, in Genesis chapter 29, just uh, Laban refused to give, Laban refused to give uh, Rachel to Jacob after he served seven years. Yeah, that was unfaithfulness, though, but 
you know, because they already had an agreement that after seven years, you will give me this. But when it was seven years, Leah had not married. And so Laban said, no, it is not right to give out the second child before the first, you know. So we have to give out the first. So Laban was doing some, that's why the narrative came in the 29th chapter, because this is a season to defend the right of the first. You go to Exodus chapter, Exodus chapter 29, you see God asking um, Moses, you know, to consecrate Aaron and his, you know, his sons. Aaron is the firstborn of Moses' parents. So you see so many firsts, so many firsts, so many firsts. Numbers 29, and that's why you have the, you know, the first of the month, the trumpets. So there is something about the first and the 29. So it's a time to secure the right of God himself because he is the first of the first. I'd like to show you something in um, Psalms and chapter, Psalms and chapter 29, Psalms 29. It says, give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. You have to recognize who God is, his worth, who is who he is. He said, give to the Lord the glory that is due to his name. Because in the 29th, you defend the right of the first. So Psalm 29 is defending the right of God. He said, give unto the Lord three times. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Verse 2, give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Give God what belongs to him. Give him his due. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. So that's it. That's, that's the glory that is due to him. To worship him. To honor him. To give him the place of the first. To put him first. Because the first belongs to him. And he is the first. So that's it. So Psalms. Psalms. Psalms 29 shows us how we need to do that. And uh, acknowledge God as the first. Acknowledge him as the first. And... Um, in Second Chronicles chapter 29, you see how that Hezekiah carried out a sweeping revival. Second Chronicles 29 carried out a sweeping revival to give God his due. Say, no, 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 we can't continue this way. That narrative is in Second Chronicles 29 because it's a season of honoring the Lord, honoring the Lord. So Hezekiah had to embark on, you know, that revival, that re reform to, I mean, to bring back the honor that is due to God. Now, you also have something like that in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. I like to read 1 Chronicles 29. That's the last chapter of um, the patent book of the Bible, 1 Chronicles chapter 29. You know, this is where the uh, David led the people to, to consecrate themselves, you know, for the building of the temple. For the building of the temple. And um, verse 2, he said, Now for the house of my God, I have prepared with all my might gold for things of gold, Gold for things to be made of gold, silver for things of silver, bronze for things of bronze, iron for things of iron, wood for things of wood, onyx stones, stones to be set, glistering stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones, and the marble slabs in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold and silver. And then he mentioned 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of offer, 
and uh, 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the, the, the walls of the, of the houses, the gold for things of gold and the silver for things of silver and, um, and for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of craftsmen. Who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord. <laughs> he said, then the leaders of the father's houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and with the officers over the king's work, offered willingly, they gave for the work of the Lord of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 10, uh Darics of gold and 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze and 100,000 talents of iron. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hand of Jesus. Now you see what is happening here. The people are giving to the Lord according to who he is. They are recognizing that God is first. They are recognizing the worth of God. And so they're giving willingly to him because he is the source of all things. So this is a season to, you know, to just re to, to recognize the Lord and give him the glory that is due to his name. Now, after these people had given this, then David blessed them. Let's see verse 10. He said, Therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. Uh, and David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head above over all. Both riches and honor come from you. And you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer willingly as this for all things come from you and of your own we have given you for we are aliens and pilgrims for you as we all are as as well as were all our fathers our days of earth as are as a shadow and uh, without hope oh lord our god all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and all is your own. <laughs> so, so David just went on. I know also, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now with joy, I have seen your people who are present here to offer willingly to you. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our fathers, keep this forever in the intent of the thoughts of the hearts of your people and fix their hearts toward you. And give to my son Solomon a loyal heart to keep your commandments and your testimonies and your status to do all these things and to build a temple for which I have made provisions. Now, you know, so that's how David spoke to the Lord. You know, he said, Lord, all that we have is yours. You know, just recognizing that you are the source of all things. You are you are the head over all. You are exalted above all. Everything comes from you. Even the ones who have given, they are still your own. What we are given to you is your own. It's not ours. Psalm 29 says, give to the Lord glory that is due to his name. Don't give him, you know, whatever you think. Just what what is due to his name give him what is due to his name now when we do that the second thing that we see um in this season is that this is a season of the voice of the lord when the Lord is honored, his voice will thunder in favor of his people. That's what we have in Psalms. 
Psalms chapter Psalms chapter 29. Psalms 29. That's where this passage talks about the voice of the Lord. He said, the voice of the Lord is over the waters when the people honor him, when his people praise him, when his people worship him, when his people give him the glory that is due to his name, the voice of the Lord will thunder in your favor. And I pray that that's what is happening to you this week, that the voice of the Lord will thunder in your favor, thunder against your adversaries, thunder against obstacles, thunder against limitations, thunder against harassment and attacks of the enemy. The voice of the Lord will go forth on your behalf because the Lord is honored. This is a week of recognizing the right of the first, the first of the firsts. He says, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord of is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young white horse. The voice of the Lord divides the flame of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer to give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, glory, glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the floor and the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. But look at how the psalm opened. In this 11 verse psalm, it opened by saying, give the Lord the glory that is due to his name. That comes before we hear the voice of the Lord. When the Lord is honored, he said, I will, I will give peace in the land and none shall make you afraid. Ah, oh, I pray that the Lord's, the voice of the Lord will sound out in your favor this week. You know, Jonah was in the belly of the fish, but the voice of the Lord commanded the fish to vomit Jonah. The fish could not refuse to, to do that. He had to happen. So as the voice of the Lord goes forth for you in this season, um, you will be greatly blessed. You will be greatly blessed. Now, the second thing that happens when we give the Lord the glory that is due to his name and acknowledge him, acknowledge his rights in this 29th season is that every disappointment will turn into a blessing. Yeah. Every disappointment will turn into a blessing. You know, when... When in Genesis chapter 29, Laban played the first game on, on Jacob and gave him Leah instead of Rachel. He did not know that he was doing a great thing for Jacob. He had no idea that he was doing something. I mean, he was blessing really. You know, because God always knew that Rachel will struggle with barrenness. God always knew that. He, God always knew that uh, Jacob, uh, Rachel would not have a child on time. And uh, God had no plan that as Abraham had one child uh, and then Isaac had two, that Jacob will also come and have one or two. God's, God wanted an explosion because the third is the game changing point. So Isaac, uh, Abraham had uh, Ishmael, had, uh, I mean, had Isaac and then Ishmael and uh, Isaac had Esau and Jacob and that was all. And now if Jacob has stayed with only Rachel, it would have been Joseph after a period of barrenness and then maybe Benjamin. But see how disappointment became a blessing. 
In chapter 29, they gave Leah to Jacob. And before you know it, Reuben came, Simeon came, uh, Levi came, and Judah came. And barrenness was banished from the house of Jacob. What the enemy meant for evil <laughs> now was turned to good. Disappointment became a blessing. That's what happens. When the Lord is giving his due place, disappointments become blessings because nobody can do anything against you. You know, the Bible says when a, when a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies will, will, will be at peace with him. Meaning that even things that are intended to work against you will definitely work for you. So that's what happened. So that's what happened. Now, so we, we see that disappointment became a blessing in the life of Jacob. But the reverse side is that when the Lord is not honored, when the Lord's right is denied him, when the Lord is not given the glory and the honor that is due to his name, people, you know, people lose protection, people lose you know, the, the disaster is open to see the book of Joel. That Joel is the 29th book of the Bible. And let's see. So it's difficult to understand the book of Joel or why the book of Joel is saying what it's saying unless we understand the mystery of the 29th. That in the 29th season, you give the Lord his due. You recognize the first. You recognize the first. That's the mystery behind labor and refusing to give out the second child because in the 29th, you defend the right of the first. So, let's see the opening of the 29th book of the Bible. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Petuel. Hear this, you elders, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days? Or even in the days of your fathers, tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children and their children another generation. What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left and the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. Awake, you drunkards, and weep and wail. All you drinkers of wine because of the new wine, for it has been cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up against my land, strong and without number. His teeth are like the teeth of a lion and has fangs of a, a fierce lion. So what are we supposed to do? So what are we supposed to do? Look at disaster. And the prophet knew that this disaster didn't just come. This came because the people had denied the Lord his due. So in chapter 2, he said, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming for it is at hand. A day of darkness and gloomness, a day of clouds and a, of thick uh, Darkness like the morning clouds spread over the mountains and people come, a great company come, you know, strong like the like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. So Joel is now calling the people, say, come on, everybody come out. Let's call upon the Lord. Let's seek the Lord. Maybe this thing can be, you know, turned around. He said in verse 12, Now therefore says the Lord, Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garment. Return to the Lord with your God, for he is precious. He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Who knows? If he will relent, if he will turn and relent and have and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. So that was the call of uh, Joel to the people that the 29th, I mean, the implication is that 29th is the time to recognize the right of the first, and God is the first of the first. 
And when this is not done, when this is done, the Lord will release his voice over against situations in our favor. And the Lord will turn disappointments into blessing. And I see that happening this week for somebody that disappointments are going to be turned into blessing. What the enemy thought was against you will harm you, will, you know, will, 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 will work against you. God is going to turn that to your advantage and turn it, you know, to a blessing for you in the name of Jesus. And the other side of it is that when that's a warning, really, that when God's right is not recognized, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. God makes that statement in certain, in different ways. The 29th president of the United States died in office, you know, and I mean, that's just a statement. That's a warning signal to say, say look, you know, Joel is saying, look at what is happening. You know, they, they, they look what the locust has left. This one has taken what the caterpillar has left. The palmer worms have collected and all that. So once the right of God is not recognized in the 29th season, a signal is sent out to say, this is what is wrong. In the 29th year of the uh, Nigeria seat of power in Abuja, that's when the chief of staff died to COVID. You know, all these are statements to say, <laughs> something is not working well. And I pray that the Lord will, the Lord blessing will be an experience this 29th week. It won't be a teaching, won't be a doctrine, but it's something that you come into that the voice of the Lord will thunder on your behalf and clear the road for you and break the cedars of Lebanon and give you the blessing, the, the blessing, the milk of the week, the honey of the week in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless you.